Hi, I'm Peter Birch and welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you continue to join the adventure here on Critter Cam. Today we're going to be collecting some eggs from a gigantic carpet python. So come on, let's do this. We're going to do this all in one shot. This snake can be a little bit gnarly, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the camera person to sort of go over in this corner because she's down here. Now, this beautiful snake I've had since she was a baby, and she's around about 20 years old now, believe it or not. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. What's even cooler is um, I've only bred these particular pythons a handful of times, and look at that. Look at that gorgeous mama sitting right there. For those that don't know what this is, this is a Centralian carpet python, better known as Morelia breadlie. An absolute gorgeous animal. These beautiful, rich oranges and red hues. And you can see down towards the tail here, it gets a little bit darker. So this is what they refer to as a classic. So you can see it's got the black lines. So the classics have some black in them and tend to be a lot darker towards the tail end. You also have a, a different form, which is called the hypo. So the, basically the hypomelanistic is more like the, the top end here, which has no black banding in them. And as you can see, she knows I'm here. She's, um, like I said, she can be quite gnarly, so I don't know what she's going to do right now. Hopefully she's going to be very pleasant about this, and um, hopefully we will all survive. Right, we're, we're all gonna survive, hopefully. So um, I'm gonna do something similar to what I did with the, the black and white jungle, is um, I'm gonna try to touch her a little bit, get her to release a bit of that coil, and make it a little bit more manageable to get her off. And as you can see, she's got a nice big lay box here, which she's spent the last couple of days moving around, flicking around, choosing where she wants to go. There's a couple of eggs here pushed on the outside, but that's okay. We can, um, typically the females, whether they have too many eggs, or if there's a slug in there, in other words, an infertile egg, sometimes I'll sort of push that infertile egg to one side, but more than often than not, with a large snake like this, they'll have a huge amount of eggs. And you can see she physically can't have too many more eggs underneath her. So that might be the reason why they're sort of out there. So, um, and trust me, I've been nailed a few times by this particular female, and it's not very pleasant at all. Uh, just like all carpets, strong, powerful animals, you should probably I mean, with large carpets, you should always sort of make sure with all constrictors that there's a second person around in case something goes wrong. 90% of the time when it comes to feeding, that's when we have a problem. Um, and obviously when we're trying to take snakes off eggs and we're trying to do it in a very nice, pleasant manner without upsetting her too much, but also not wanting to get nailed, obviously. So it's a bonus for me. I don't want to particularly cop a big bite from this beautiful girl so I'll just slowly work her off and just like some of the other carpet python eggs they're not always stuck together so if I can see that they're not stuck I'll try and remove them I mean the mum's done a wonderful job here you can see she's coiled up underneath the eggs too there's a couple of infertile or slugs like this weird shaped thing right here but the most important thing is that we get them from her first. We um, let her sort of just take her off the eggs. Sit her back in here. And I'm gonna take the whole nest box out. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna clean her cage out. I'm gonna give her a good wash down because um, you can see how she's reacting right now. She knows that there was eggs there and now they're gone, so. Now that's a pretty good result. Not because there's eggs, because there's no bloodshed. So we're gonna go out here. Onto the trusty desk and have a closer look at these eggs. I mean, look at that, that's a gorgeous amount. So I've made the decision to artificially incubate these. So that will mean that I'm gonna take these eggs from mum, I'm gonna put them in here. 
It's a suspended method, which means there's water underneath. There's a small amount of water in the tray. Just enough to add condensation. The tray sits there, the eggs sit on top of the tray, so they don't actually touch the water as such. And um, obviously as they heat up, there's gonna be a bit of humidity inside the box, allowing the eggs to get the right amount of moisture they need. Now these eggs, quite warm to touch. So I'm going to give them a quick shot with the temp gun. Look at that. 31.8, 30 degrees. In the middle of the egg mass there, we've got 31.8 on the edge. 30, 31. It's pretty amazing to see that mum can keep those eggs nice and warm. And I really like to try and get all that sphagnum out from underneath there. And like I said, there's a couple of um, sketchy eggs in here. So I'm going to try my best to get them out. Which will mean that I need to do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. To get my face in there to see what's going on. These guys usually lay huge huge clutches of a particular size and this girl's done exactly that I mean that's what the infertiles look like and there's one there there's one inside there and what I'm trying to get right now is this one down here this one hanging in underneath here and it looks like there might be another one down here just there so that's going to involve a uh, a little bit more time consuming process. Now we've also got these other couple of eggs that weren't adhered and joined together. So we'll place them sort of away from the main lot. So when something does go wrong, we can remove them nice and easy. And like I said, we'll We'll probably go through and candle those two, which we can candle them right now actually to show you guys what I mean by candling. So candling is the art of using a torch, placing it, basically I usually place it underneath the egg or to the side of the egg. It illuminates through the egg like a bright light and typically you should be able to see blood vessels or coloration inside that egg as such. You can see that yellow sort of mark. Most people would go, that's a slug. When you look slightly further down, down the bottom here, there's blood vessels. Now because that, hopefully you can see that, there's blood vessels. So that, all that means is that it is a fertile egg. There's an embryo in there. It's just maybe a little bit weaker. It's taking a little bit longer to, to kick on. And once again, you can see the blood vessels on the top there. And if we came around this side and put it on there, it would look like it's a non-fertile egg, but it's clearly fertile. So, candling is not an easy thing to do, and um, because a lot of people misinterpret what they can see. Look at that one. You can see the blood vessels straight away, the different color. It's not yellow, bright yellow as such. This pink sort of vessels in there. So yes. It's pretty cool. Like I said, this may take a little bit of time. I need uh, both my hands, and my hands are attached to my mouth, believe it or not. And so I might need a little bit of time just to slowly work these off. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do, much easier than working with the anteresia, obviously. Because these eggs typically are a lot bigger, more robust egg deal with and all I'm doing really is letting the sphagnum support and what you got to do is you got to try and separate because these eggs like sticking together it's like having the worst sticky tape or chewing gum joining those together and um, as you sort of slowly work them off it's almost like the uh, the skin of the shell 
it's got several layers and you can see that and when you're sort of separating them you're almost pulling a little bit of that as they stick together so you're separating that and then we have a, a dirty slug so we got that one that's one down Just a couple more to go and obviously supporting them and doing them from underneath there's two down that other one's really buried in there, that guy. This guy's on the edge here. So, um, let's see how we can go to get this guy out. Like I said, there's the others. There's a couple others in there already. But, um, yeah. Slowly work this out. Sketchy at the best of times. So that egg that's underneath there is actually connected to one, two eggs really well. And working like this is very difficult. So sometimes it's actually connected to this egg too here. So sometimes it works better to try and separate eggs as many as possible. You can see it's right, it's right in there. And what you want to do is you want to slowly work it. If you work too quick or too rash, you might actually puncture an egg. That's um, that's not a cool thing to do. Didn't think I was going to get that. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show where we collected some eggs from my 20 year old breadline or Centralian carpet python. Make sure you leave a comment below. Hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And as always, guys, thank you so much for continuing to support Critican. Mm -hmm.